comes to Okay, the topic this period is going to be on uh, government corruption that I and several dozen other government investigators discovered over a period of years. And intimately involved with all this is corruption in the judicial branch, which toward the end I'll go into. Um, uh, to well, welcome to All Day Live. Uh, I'm Will Wilson, and I appreciate everybody watching the show tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, as we're going to be covering things, this is All Day Live, by the way. I'm Will P. Wilson, the producer, and we're going to have Curtis Royce tonight as well. There's Kurt right there in the background. And Kurt, it's good to see you. And we're going to have Rodney Stitch. Rodney Stitch, FAA investigator, defrauding America, fly the, fly the unfriendly skies, several books, renowned legend legendary books and the books really in case you're an investigative journalist I'm sure quite a few of you may be but uh, if you now it's time for us to, to hear from Rodney and Stu Webb as you can see the website Stu Webb back behind us veterans today veterans today.com and that's uh, Stu Webb type in slash author slash s web you can get his his page here at veterans today and um, so we're going to cover several things and I, uh, mainly it's just it is it's my greatest honor. Uh, I have had the highest re respect for Rodney. Uh, truly one of the great icons of investigative journalism in history, for real. And uh, not afraid to go up against the bad guys to the point where they do things to the people that do. All we're trying to do and he's tried to do is we're trying to protect the American people. It is not easy when the, pe the bad guys have all the money and no scruples or, or let's say, let's say, I would call it, what would you call it, Rodney and Stu? Let's introduce you. And uh, we've got them here on the phone. Can you? Can we hear you? Uh, uh, they yeah. called in. I, I think the best way <laughs> um, to refer to me is a corruption fighting whistleblower um, with several dozen um, confidants. These are professionals who are in the CIA, FBI, and things like that. So I have a lot of inside information. Well, let me, let me go further with the introduction with Rodney Stitch, Good. former federal aviation investigator, writes his first book after he leaves, uh, Unfriendly Skies. And I've known this guy since 1991. And uh, when I found out that, uh, matter of fact, uh, he was the first one to ever introduce me, I believe it was, to a talk show host named Tom Valentine, and scheduled me on a show. And then the next day they had a warrant, or the day before when they found out I was going to do the show, they issued a warrant for my arrest for threatening phone calls to my ex-in-laws. And I hid from the FBI for a year, and Rodney uh, printed his book and sent it to the judge and the judge decided he was going to release me shortly after that. Really? No <laughs> so kidding. I credit Rodney in my name appearing in his book, Defrauding America, for one of the reasons of the dismissal and release from federal prison as yep. a political prisoner. And with that said, his credentials speak for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for real, Rodney. Um, I remember when... Uh, I was working with Bob Lewis and we were writing the books for Americans Bulletin and it was covering just about everything we were doing was going right back to the Bush crime family. It's amazing what they've done to this world. And I know a lot of what you had to deal with was the same people, right? CIA rendition, you name it. I'm sure you could tell us a lot about that. Uh, a lot's in the books, Defrauding America or Fly the, Fly the Unfriendly Skies, so, you know, get fried. Well, but, you know, uh, I have over a dozen books now. Um, Amazon at Amazon.com and other places, and uh, those books you're, you're mentioning uh, um, give a hell of a lot of information about what really goes on. But some of the other books are, are really explosive uh, in so far as where we are today. Right. Um. Ten books. Actually, the links to these many books is you can go to Defrauding America, right? Yeah. Right. And, dot com. Um, but uh, a number of books came after that. But that's a good book uh, to give right. a pretty wide uh, understanding 
of the problems in the United States government, which the media, Congress, everybody covers up. So it's sometimes a little difficult when you're on a talk show to where you have a limited time. You mention some of these things, and they sound so bizarre. It's hard to believe, but when people read the books and all of the input uh, put into it by different people, then, then it's believable. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Until you've actually had to deal with it, write about it, and see what they do. But uh, they made life pretty bad for people like you as well. I mean, just trying to do your job, they tried to do everything to, to, to do everything, right? to try to keep you from doing your job, right? I don't think I'm yeah, wrong. Well, what they did to me, well, what, it, uh, it happened after I uh, had filed a federal lawsuit exposing a lot of this. And I, I filed it under the federal crime reporting statute. And once I did that, then it really came after me. And uh, this uh, that exposed another area of corruption. That's in the federal courts. And um, eventually what they did, they, uh, 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 they charged me with criminal contempt of court for even filing that lawsuit. And uh, they denied me a jury trial. I ended up in a pokey for six months. And while I'm in there, they're seizing the Department of Justice um, um, personnel and federal judges were seizing my the ten million in assets that I had, and this is, it was all done uh, in gross violations of law. And a number of my uh, lawsuits, I went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and they all covered up. And so we today we have a bigger scandal than we had in the past. And we haven't got to the worst part of this uh, conversation yet. I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, yeah. here's, here's a key part um, of what, why we, we have had so many successful terrorist attacks. I'm talking about 9-11 and then two of them before that. Here's what happened. And I'll uh, try to make this quick. One of my confidants um, was a uh, member of the Colombo Mafia family in New York City. His name was Gregory Scarpa, Jr. Uh, Scarpa um, became a mole in the Al-Qaeda cell headed by Ramsey Youssef and convinced Youssef that his mafia group was also uh, interested in undermining the, the federal government. So um, um, the Al-Qaeda oper operative then was giving uh, the Al-Qaeda agent um, periodically told my source about planned terrorist attacks. Now, um, uh, and then so my, my mafia guy he and his attorney were reporting this to FBI agents in the New York City offices, and they took it seriously. Um, Department of Justice, however, in Washington, they were planning to discredit Scarpa. Uh, Scarpa was um, scheduled to give uh, testimony in several criminal trials and the testimony he would be given would be about the murders that his father committed with the help of or at the suggestion of a key FBI supervisor. So uh, this was similar to what was going on in the Boston offices that uh, has had publicity. Uh, so the Washington Department of Justice were planning to discredit Scarpa um, by lying about him at these trials. Well, now Scarpa comes uh, along and is providing advance information on the terrorist attacks. So if that uh, information is, becomes uh, known in government, 
and Scarpa would have credibility and the scheme by the Department of Justice personnel uh, uh, would be subverted. So what, uh, what was decided was to deep it was to keep secret all of this information, advance information, and in that way, uh, none of the defenses uh, were presented. So um, one of the first uh, attacks that um, Scarpa uh, learned and provided information to FBI agents was the downing of a plane. Uh, leaving uh, New York City, and this warning was given about two or three weeks before that happened, and that was American Airlines or TWA uh, Flight 800. And then uh, here were the Department of Justice guys. Now they they could see the evidence of uh, covering up. So, but if they now uh, uh, revealed. The other uh, information about what was about to happen, then, uh, of course, they would look real bad. So anyhow, the cover-up was continued, and uh, the uh, forewarned bombing of the embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, um, that was covered up, and, of course, then the bombings took place. And then the next one was, of course, the hijackings, airliners and that was also um, that had advanced information so as a result of that one uh, criminal act the uh, covering up of advanced information we had those three series of catastrophic uh, attacks that led to two wars and this is probably the biggest scandal and that's uh, very possibly it's ever been exposed, or at least the damage has been. Now, everyone that I notify of the, uh, notify, keeps, uh, they won't respond because it's so sensitive. It's like the third rail. So it's the only people that can really expose it would be the public because the media is covering up. And there's a reason for that. So anyhow, I have a book uh, on that particular uh, one is called Terrorism and Deadliest Enabling Scandals of 21st, 21st Century. And then I have several other books go into that. One is History of Aviation Disasters, 1950 to 9-11. So this is a big scandal, and it's, if, if it would come out, it would give a lot of support to the whistleblowers, and, uh, and it would um, affect uh, a great number of people in in government, so it's it's very explosive, but it's hard to um, one individual coming out and exposing this. Even though I have a lot of credibility, um, uh, it's hard to get the public to um, do anything. Incidentally, talking about credibility, um, on one of my websites is a unprecedented. A personal letter from Supreme Court Justice Byron White. And the reason he sent me that personal letter, I had submitted a petition, uh, it's an emergency petition to the U.S. Supreme Court describing a lot of these uh, matters I'm talking about here. And uh, in that letter, and the letter is posted on the Internet, he... Uh, and, and the uh, Supreme Court justices don't send you a personal letter when you submit a petition like that. But anyhow, he was also apologizing for not being able to help. And the fact that the Supreme Court justice uh, has to apologize, that raises some other questions. But anyhow, there's so many scandals involved here. If only... Um, some major source would give it publicity and let it uh, start uh, becoming known. Rodney Snitch, can, can you hear Kurt? Kurt, it's uh, my associate colleague, Curtis Royce. Go ahead, Kurt. Have you heard of Operation Mockingbird? Can you hear him? Kurt, my, my oh, a closer. okay. Uh, hold, hold on for a second. We'll get, get Kurt closer to the phone. Go ahead, Kurt. Uh, 
you can just pull that. Uh, they got to hear you right here. Go ahead. Uh, Rodney, can you hear me? Yes. Have you heard of Operation yes. Mockingbird? Yes, and I forget what that was about. It's where the CIA controls the media in this country. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot, a lot of information the public doesn't know about not only the CIA, but other government agencies uh, having uh, media personnel on the secret payroll. And this is one of the reasons, uh, not the only reason by no means, why the media covers up for all of this crud. And I, in my uh, writings, I make the uh, media complicit and enablers in these uh, tragedies because they, by covering up the corruption, they allow the um, um, uh, resulting tragedies to occur. Have you, uh, do you hear about the number I'd of- I'd add to that for a minute. If, we, if you go back in time, I saw the media being taken over basically in 1992. And that's when the overthrow really began, and that was the buying up of the media by the crime syndicate, by Leonard Millman and, and George Bush and others, and the Brothmans of Seagram 7. And when they took over the studios in Los Angeles over Hollywood, that's when they absorbed the rest of the media, because ABC News, as, a, as an example, Eisner and Mickey Mouse, that was Millman, and, and they threw out, uh, they took over uh, CNN with drug money and, and kicked uh, Ted Turner out. And all you saw after that was a complete uh, overthrow. And, uh, you know, I might add CBS is uh, controlled by Daddy Bush. Uh, so the media, and if you go back now, they, they've absorbed all the stock in the media through the, their major banks. And if you look at the bank holding companies, that's them. So uh, there's no media. And what Rodney was referring to, we can go in and start taking a look at different ones. You take a look at Wolf Blitzer as an example. He's a Mossad agent, Israeli Mossad. If you take a look at that Anna, Anna Poor something on CNN that claims to be an Arab, uh, she's mega Mossad. Uh, Veterans Today has outed a lot of those people, Gordon Duff in particular, just in the past couple of weeks in a couple of uh, stories he did uh, because of their, their, the information they're putting out. Uh, this is a reason that they've, look, they've lost so much audience. People don't even turn on the news anymore because uh, they, just, they know that they're lying to them. And they've got so many stooges. And if you really look at another thing at the media, why are we seeing trials? Why are we seeing trials of people killing people? And that's what they play all day. It's become a friggin' soap opera instead of reporting. We don't have First Amendment uh, within, within what's considered to be the mainstream media any longer. The closest thing you're going to get to the truth is the alternative media like Rodney Stitch, myself, and I, I give credit to veterans today. They have basically in the past 10 months become the number one alternative, and they're actually rated mainstream media, and they are beating out ABC, CBS, and NBC in ratings at the current time. Wow. Yeah, it's a great website. Well, we, uh, we interviewed Stu and uh, Leo Wana last week, and I loaded it up on YouTube, and we had about 5,000 hits in a day and a half. So somebody's interested, obviously. So, Well, you know, Leo was going to join us here tonight, and uh, they, he's in protective custody, and they had to move him today. So you know, as yeah. a result of the past few interviews he's been doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm only laughing because it's, it's comical that these things have to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree with you, Stu. Um, Rodney, I noticed that you've also addressed the death panels. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. I went, I personally encountered it. And this death panel um, is uh, outside. In other words, it doesn't have anything to do with, uh, uh, with the present. Uh, health plan. It's something that goes on all the time. And what happened, and I wrote a book on it, uh, and that's, uh, I lost my co-pilot, Glenda, uh, on that. Um, I took her to a, uh, to the hospital for a relatively minor um, uh, a breathing problem, which they treated. And then um, before sending her home, 
they sent her to a uh, skilled nursing facility for pulmonary rehabilitation treatment, which is relatively minor, and then that she would come home. But they sent her to a place that did not have that treatment, but the place accepted her anyhow uh, to keep the uh, patients flowing. Well, as soon as they got there, then they... Uh, they uh, uh, they um, tried to tell her, look, uh, you can't be improved upon. You should um, select um, palliative care or hospice. And I was there when the doctor said that, and I, uh, so we had a little problem there. But anyhow, then they gave her um, uh, opiates while they were there, and you don't give opiates to a COPD patient. But anyhow... Uh, that and um, uh, I forget the uh, drug, it has suicidal side effects. They were giving that to her. And uh, so they talked her into going to a hospice. And Glenda was not hospice material. But so they sent her there anyhow over my protest. I, I told them, well, I'm going to appeal it. They said they wouldn't recognize me. Well, things are happening so fast. So she ends up at this um, hospice facility uh, on a Thursday afternoon. And uh, Glenda was feeling good. She was reading the newspapers, uh, had a Kindle on her lap, uh, smiling, having a lot of people uh, visit her. I leave her that night. When I come back in the morning, she's comatose and dead that day. They gave her apparently an opiate overdose. So uh, then you uh, appeal this. You, uh, you report it to uh, California authorities, federal authorities. They don't do a damn thing. That was my first appearance with the death panel. And there was a lot more to this, but that, that was the highlights. And so it's easy to put anybody to death, and it's uh, nobody... Uh, nobody suffers any retaliation. Yeah, for real. And did you write it? Did you? Is this any in any of your books that people can catch up on, or maybe we can? Oh have yeah, you... that I have a book just on uh, on that. Um, um, it's called uh, Medical Industries Death Panels: Greek Tragedy of a Lady Named Glenda. Well, I also forgot to mention to you. That as soon as Glenda, uh, one of her sons, learned about Glenda's death, he committed suicide. Really? And so it's a double tragedy. But it, um, it helps to show uh, some of the arrogance in, the, in different pockets of the medical community. Right. I know. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Truly amazing. Um, and how it, they can get the get, they can go to defraudingamerica.com, right, and order the book through that. Yeah, now that that book goes into a an awful lot of the early corruption uh, uh, in the United States. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it covers so many different areas, and it gives the American public a totally different uh, outlook on what, what is being done to them, just like the two wars we got into, the lies that preceded that. I have uh, books on that, and uh, also on the Internet site, uh, Defrauding America, um, uh, there's probably several thousand um, um, articles that I put on it over the years. You know, I've been at this for so many years, that there's so much material I've, I've acquired. And again, this isn't just me talking. This is uh, making reference uh, to people, just like uh, TWA 800, for instance. Um, I had uh, one, uh, one pilot who was in the, a uh, military pilot who was in the air at the time, looking at TWA when, uh, when it went down. And I have several pages of uh, comments that he made about what he saw. And it was a, 
uh, it was a missile, but there's a lot more to that. Oh, yeah. At, uh, and you at have in the time. book also, Rodney, you have uh, tremendous amounts of, uh, you put in a lot of the people that I was in Springfield, Missouri, Siberia, USA with. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, a lot of those uh, 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 spooks, many of them are dead today. Some are still oh, alive. God. That's, uh, they're dying off. Uh, uh, so many of them, uh, golly, I, I miss miss talking to them. They they were so informative. One of the most important ones was Gunter Rusbacher. Now he was uh, he was probably in more places uh, that that was in the news uh, or in our international affairs than any CIA person I ever heard about. But he was, um, uh, it was interesting, all the details he gave me about October Surprise, because he was at some of the meetings. And of course, October Surprise, um, uh, members of Congress, the media, they all cover up for it and says, no, it never happened. And it did happen, and it reflects uh, on another area of corruption in our government. Um, we're going to take a real quick break here. Hang in there for a second. Keep that thought, Rodney. It's a great, great honor to hear from you. Uh, uh, and so, Stu, as well, truly, we, you can't believe how much we have greatest honor for you, for what you guys have done. And I have Curtis Rice here as well helping. We'll be right back in just a second. Go to defraudingamerica.com or go to stuweb.com or go to veterans today dot com forward slash author forward slash s w e b b forget we're just trying to get us all educated here these guys are doing a great job we'll hear from you in just a second hang in there and intimately involved with all this is corruption in the judicial branch which toward the end i'll go into um, uh, to some extent and with the information the documented information uh, we have on government corruption, I think a lot of good can be done with it if uh, people will only use the material that we have accumulated. Let me go back a little bit. First, all of this is also be, uh, tied in with September 11th, and September 11th is simply one more event in the aviation game that's been going on for many years and which had as its breeding ground, the corruption in the FAA. Uh hey, it's great to hear back from everybody, I, I think. Of course, this is about an incredible show that I'm listening because I'm getting a first front row seat to hear from some people that I, I have the greatest admiration and respect for. Authors, legendary authors, Stu Webb, as well as Rodney Stitch. Rodney Stitch is a, an icon of trying to help save us in a lot of different ways. You guys don't realize how many how many books have you written, Rodney? Well, I think there's over twenty. You know, over twenty books <laughs> on uh, Amazon.com. No kidding. Okay, they could probably find all that uh, online. Just type in your name, right, on Google. Oh yeah. Well, if you put my name on a Google search engine, uh, I think it comes up around twenty nine thousand uh, links. No kidding. Wow. Hey, Stu, give us some names of some of the, the stuff that you've written, the books, whatever, just so people can catch up on that real quick. Some of the things I've, I've written on what? Published in your books. Published. I know you work with Gordon Duff of VeteransToday.com. Well, I'm, you know, I've, there's a lot out here on me. I'm in, I'm in Rodney's book as well, The Proudy America. I appear in, I think, seven books. I've contributed to the Mafia, CI, and George Bush by Pete Bruton. Most of them are up on my front of my website under stewweb.com. Right. Uh, but my name doesn't appear in there. I asked for it not to appear because I was in federal prison as a political prisoner. Right. Rodney's came out. If it wasn't for what he had written about me and published, uh, you know, uh, I probably would have remained in there for a lot longer. But I do give him credit for that book and send it to judge and different things. And uh, that, that uh, of course, they dismissed the charges against me, but the judge was out. out he was yelling and screaming over that book <laughs> wow. about the prosecutors. But I uh, contributed, my name appears in the Oklahoma City bombing power politics. Uh, uh, my, uh, let me see, let me think. Uh, 
There's there's several of them. I can't even think of all of them. There's, I think seven of them, but I've contributed about 12 different books. I believe it is now. But uh, uh, I have my website, stuweb.com. You go in and click on it, and uh, it's. It, I think there's a, a lot up there I've, I've done over the years. You know, I was responsible for those four congressional investigations back-to-back, Silverado and uh, the HUD scandal of 1989, the Denver Airport uh, scandal, and what they called, they dubbed the Keating Five, but it was actually the MDC 200. And uh, I've been after them for a long time over, you know, staying on top of it. But it keeps coming back to the uh, crime syndicate, the Bush crime syndicate, I call it. Uh, it uh, Everything keeps leading right back to them, and these... Uh, the Zionist takeover, the Council of Thirteen. So, you know, my work's there. My my uh, my uh, credentials are there. I believe over the years of exposure. So, right. As right. Gordon Duff says, and he's the he's the uh, you know Gordon's military intelligence. Everybody knows he runs the Damas Corp, and he's the editor of Veterans Today. As he has, uh, I think the quote. Uh, I'm not sure what it was on my website, but uh, I think I, anybody can look at it. Uh, as he has said, if it wasn't for you, Stu, we wouldn't even known who in the hell uh, what the criminals were at the very top. Yeah. So, you know, that's uh, that says a lot in itself. Well, you know, I, I wrote those nine books for with Bob Lewis, uh, Robert E. Lee Lewis. Bob was the former lead investigator from 60, 1966 to 73 under Chuck Percy for the U.S. Senate, and then later became a courier for the U.S. Senate. Uh, and came to me in 1991, asked me if I'd write a book. I didn't want to put my name on it, but I didn't know anything about organized crime. So I did write a book for him. He ended up writing one every year until 1999. And he was down in Dallas. He was about to find out about the vote fraud coming about. Next thing you know, he's arrested, detained in the Joplin City Underground Federal Detention Center. I go get my car, find out it's full of sewage, that that's all they had better things to do in front of uh, Secret Service. And uh, as I got back to Seattle, Everything I own no longer belonged to me. They used a trust with my name on it, forged my name on it, went in and took everything I own, the title of my homes, my properties, my cars, you name it. Party name Rochelle Perosk, Vance Boudreau, a guy named Joe Eisen, apparently a mob attorney in Dallas, and they're probably all working for Michael S. Kunath. The, uh, the character that was in charge of my, uh, helping me run my finances was working with my wife to dumb me down using chemical lobotomies and you name it. And it worked, and then they forged my signature before that. So each time I tried to get it back up, they just sent in their people to do it again. But I thought I'd get those names in there while this is on the record. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Sorry about that. No, go ahead. I think that uh, we need to give Rodney the time. Uh, yes. You know. Yes. Rodney, you're getting up there. You've been a whistleblower for so long. You're probably, you know, I could say that there's only probably about four or five of us still left alive. Oh, yes. You know. You know, it's... Some of the people that, um, uh, 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 that were feeding us information, they were so colorful. It's, um, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, people like to read mysteries. Well, these type of books are not only very interesting, but you learn something from reading them. Uh, it's amazing what goes on that the public has no under, no knowledge of. Uh, that's why um, uh, uh, I don't uh, even talk about these things to the average person I meet locally because they're so out of it. But of course, on a show like this, you'll have a more more, uh, more people aware of some of these things. But um, it's 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 uh, really uh, fabulous, and some of the stories. When I say stories, true stories. I mean, uh, I, I I've had the head heads of secret CIA airlines uh, describing some of the some of the uh, some of their flights, the drugs, the military equipment, uh, like being flown to the IRA and things like that. That they average person has uh, no idea ab about and it's, it never appears in the uh, mainstream media. Right. Right. Rodney's investigations over the years have been pretty hardcore, believe me. They've, uh, and what he has in the books, I, I, you know, I've got them uh, 
recommend a reading, and uh, the people should should read. They should see what is going on within their government, because Rodney's run across tons and tons of CI sources. You got you got a sister book called Drugging America that's an excellent piece as well. I mean, you've got 20 books out there, but uh, I knew a lot of those people that were put in that book. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I've renamed that book uh, America's Corrupt War on Drugs. With it's the same material, oh, plus some new material that's come in. But uh, I, I felt Drugging America doesn't the title doesn't tell say very much. But in, by uh, renaming it America's Corrupt War on Drugs, um, it, it describes. Uh, how people are set up, uh, and uh, Stuart, I uh, probably uh, know a number of people that were falsely set up. It shows how easy anybody can be set up. And I give many, uh, the names of many people who were set up that way and for different reasons. And the books, I even have, I mean, the books cover so many different areas. Uh, and the only reason I could write those is all these people that came to me. Like, for instance, there's one book. Um, it's about the Japanese pl- uh, plunder during World War II and how they hid the money, hid a lot of these valuables in the Philippines, and how uh, OSS and CIA uh, CIA people after the war and. I uh, got hold, uh, retrieved some of this, and it went, uh, the, uh, the um, plunder was put in banks all over the world. And the reason I know about it, uh, uh, I uh, met the widow of an OSS uh, person. He was a Filipino in, uh, in the Philippines during World War II, and he knew where some of the plunder was buried. Well, his widow, turned over to me dozens and dozens of documents showing different banks all over the world where some of this plunder was placed. So it's fabulous, uh, uh, all the different uh, subjects that are being described. It's uh, almost a college course on government intrigue. Oh, yeah. It's actually probably history lessons that nobody has ever heard of. Roddy, you also helped to advise the FAA and quite a number of the most uh, respected leaders in the FAA, right? Well, you know, I, um, uh, I filed lawsuits against a number of people trying uh, for the sole purpose of reporting uh, the corruption that was going on, you know, and this is an interesting subject. Matter of fact, Stu, I have to send you the email on this. I sued, and this has never been done before, and it's not as ridiculous as you think. I sued the just justices of the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, if anybody does that, that's newsworthy, even if it was done by some uh, crackpot. But mine uh, was very factual, and they responded to it. They didn't deny my allegations. They simply said um, they're immune. Now, you've never heard anywhere that the justices of the Supreme Court were sued, <laughs> but it's, it was done, and it was well <clears throat> covered up. Well, Brett Landreth, uh, this illegally disbarred attorney here who had filed a suit against Jeb Bush and Novation LLC for hospital uh, supply manipulation, mon- uh, monopolization, uh, a friend of mine that uh, uh, they killed two U.S. attorneys in, in Fort Worth over him and others taking uh, and getting indictments against them. And as soon as they indicted them, the indictments were sealed after they killed two U.S. attorneys, and this was about four years ago, five years ago. And uh, he turned around, and uh, I, of course, filed injunctive relief when they were trying to murder me here in Kansas City, the FBI. And this was done last year, and even before, in trying to transfer a grand jury demand that's still open out of Denver, Colorado. It's never been heard, and uh, <clears throat> cleared back since 1995. 
and I named in uh, my uh, injunctive relief against a federal judge here, the one that had uh, upheld his illegal disbarment from the Kansas Supreme Court that railroaded him over this case, and he had some other cases, but it was over that. And uh, I filed in her court that he was never allowed even a hearing. She illegally uh, upheld and disbarred him from the federal level uh, without even a hearing. And so I filed the injunctive relief intentionally to put the evidence into the court of which it did. And they wouldn't even give me a hearing. They, they canceled it out without even having a hearing. They have to have a hearing and dismiss it through a hearing. It never even happened. So Brett Landreth filed several months back, and the stories are up on Veterans Today uh, about his filing under on my uh, archive part of the page where it says uh, Veterans Today forward slash author forward slash S Webb. And I have the filing where he filed in D.C. court for injunctive relief against all of them. And it's kind of ironic, but they, the judge herself had never even heard of the case. And about two weeks ago, she hears of it because her clerks were hiding it from her and making rulings and putting her signatures on it. And they actually, he had it stuck in there, and they had Eric Holder, he named Eric Holder, and he named Supreme Court Justice John Roberts in there uh, for injunctive relief. And they dismissed this thing on Tuesday without hearing, which nobody follows rule of law, just like in Rodney's case. Nobody follows rule of law. They just make up their own frigid laws. Right. Can you believe it? Well, that's true, Ed. That uh, federal judges will, uh, will openly violate uh, your, uh, your, uh, your your rights uh, uh, your, on the, all of the federal protection. And so when uh, this is not isolated judge, uh, an isolated judge, it's standard practice when you're, uh, when the government's after you. It is standard practice among them. They will not, uh, they uh, listen to the uh, corrupt Justice Department, and that's the problem that we have. Oh, yes. Two of them work in unison. Can you believe it? I mean, uh, I, I wonder if they even have any idea or regret the fact that they're destroying the very system that their children are going to have to grow up in. As Bob well, Lewis used to say. They're part of the food chain of the New World Order, and they're only concerned about themselves, and they think they're promised. And you know, the funny part is, it's just like the 5,000 Iran-Contra players that were locked up immediately after Iran-Contra. And here I was exposing the CIA Dirty Bank, uh, which was my ex-in-law, Silverado Savings, and I get locked up with all these drug dealers. And they were the ones that Daddy Bush turned on, coughed them all up, which were military, many of them, CIA, uh, DEA, FBI, and other agents that were hauling drugs, mules, that were part of the system. Many of them were compromised and forced to do it, like Bo Abbott and some others, and then came back and ratted them out and killed his daughter and all kinds of, or killed his uh, uh, to-be wife after she had bore their kid. But his kid was only 45 days old. Uh, you know, many people like, like Bob Hunt, who was Naval SEAL, uh, Lieutenant Commander, Office Naval Intelligence. Rodney has him in his, in his book, Defrauding America. They were all locked up with me, and that's where the government turned on them. And here Bob was the one that captured Noriega in behalf of George Bush uh, because Noriega was going to rat him out on all of his drugs, basically what it was. And he, 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 uh, he took over their hotels in Panama, the Hilton Hotel Corp., and that's really what got him in trouble, and he was wanting more of the cut everything else in the drugs and uh so you know here's bob hunt capturing him at the vatican compound down there in panama he's got george bush on the phone with him and the president of the united states at the time senior and uh, senior screaming at him to kill him he says no sir he says i have an arrest warrant i'm going to uh, capture him and bring him to justice and he and and uh you know he he used a Put it this way, Bush was screaming back, you mother effer, and blah, 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 and if you do that, uh, I'll see to it, you're dead, or something like that. And I remember Bob telling me, he says, F you, Mr. President, he hung up. <laughs> well, he got the, the famous Springfield, Missouri, Siberia, USA, and it's ironic, but there were a bunch of federal agents that were locked up in there that were the same ones, they were the ones trying to bust some of the same people that were there. 
But Bush turns on his people. He always cheats them out of their money, and he turns on them. Look what he did this so time. these federal judges one day, when they're used up, and they get used up, and they become a liability, they get rid of them. Hey, you know. hey. Uh, Stu Webb, uh, look what uh, George B Bush d uh, Sr. did to his former business partner, Saddam Hussein, <laughs> in his war with Iran, selling them uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, of course, we all know about the gasification of the Kurds, which the media... Of course, that was Gulf War. That, uh, that was Iraq Gate, where they were selling illegal biological weapons. That contaminated the Colorado River. They were making them out there in fruit of Colorado because Millman was involved with it with Daddy Bush. They were shipping out of Boca Raton, Florida at the airport where they couldn't even, they said the hangars were so full of cash that sometimes the people that were delivering the cash, they couldn't even get the doors shut. And they would ship that stuff, VIA, as a, as a uh, supposedly uh, cherry juice, food commodity, uh, through Britain over to Israel. And they did uh, even uh, Mercedes Benz fraud where they were making it look like delivering uh, Mercedes-Benz trucks here to dealers uh, in the United States, who later were investigated by the government saying, you had a bill of lading, you sold this truck, where did it go? And we didn't have that truck. Oh, the Mercedes is showing it. They had Mercedes-Benz in on it. They had the Israeli Mossad and Bibi Netanyahu in on it. And they were shipping the biological chemical agents that killed the Kurds, uh, the Saddam Hussein, illegally. That's, that's a violation of the Barclay Cohen Denture Act. Then when it bit him in the rear end, Hillary Clinton was laundering the money through the uh, B&L Bank uh, out of Chicago. And when Henry Gonzalez got the information, which I gave him that information, they blew that tunnel up in Chicago and flooded the basement so he couldn't get to the records. And then when it bit him again, and Gulf War veterans came back all contaminated, contaminated with what is known as Desert Storm, Gulf War Syndrome, illness, killing them. You know, they've covered that up. So it's been every time that comes back up, it's rehashed into or created into a new a title for their, their so-called scandal. But, you know, any of those vets that are suffering, what they got hit with is anthrax, cyanide, HIV, uh, uh, hepatitis A, B, and or C is what they put in there. And the one thing that's killing them that they don't know that's destroying their hearts and their organs and so forth is the cyanide. They were shot for anthrax. Uh, you know, I, I got hit with anthrax in 95 trying to kill me. They, they were trying to do me. They did, I think, 28 people with it. Uh, many people, even Darlene Novinger that Rodney knew, she died of it. Russell Welch, a highway patrolman in Mena, Arkansas, that was trying to bust them on their, their Mena, Arkansas, with Clintons and, and Bushes on their, their drug hauling, part of Iran-Contra. They killed him in anthrax in 96. But anthrax, doxycycline, gets rid of the anthrax. If you survive and you get the, you get the doxycycline in, of course, it's rebuilding the immune system. But these vets... I took shots for anthrax <clears throat> poisoning and so forth that were over there. Many of them are dead uh, that were in Gulf War. Many of their families are contaminated, and they don't know what it is. And through saliva, it, you can transfer, I understand, the, uh, the, the disease itself, which is part of it's to deal with cyanide. And it's just like we had, uh, if you remember, Hoop Gibson, Rodney, the DEA yes. agent, he was uh, in Las Vegas for... He has cancer now. Yeah, well, who, you know, was uh, a good guy investigating the drugs and so forth. They contaminated him with cyanide poisoning, and he had to have a heart replacement. I mean, his whole entire heart got ate up with the, with the uh, cyanide. So the cyanide is very important to get out of your body, and you can do it through chelation therapy. You can also do it... Uh, my understanding, but you have to grease your body up with first cold press olive oil is what alternative doctors say, and you know a shot a day for about ten days, and then you can start taking carbon tablets, and that will actually uh, take the uh, take the uh, 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 cyanide out of your body, which is a, a, a metal, but you got to replenish the other metals back in your body with colloidal minerals of some type. So there's there's ways of getting healed from it, but the vets, if they only knew. And, you know, I had a uh, uh, Colorado Daily uh, newspaper uh, actually wrote a, a series for me on this uh, back in 1997, Ron Baird. 
and uh, he won a national award over it because of the uh, Colorado River was contaminated, Lake Mead in Las Vegas at the Hoover, Hoover Dam, uh, fish were being deformed. And they were making the stuff and fruit of Colorado right there on I-70. And uh, it was only 300 yards off the Colorado River. And when it's snow or rain, the, the pond that they were using, mixing this stuff up on, it's right at the pond that actually goes underneath I-70. And if you cross it there, fruit, you get a heck of a stink. You never smelled anything like this. And, uh, but that contaminated the Colorado River that caused red tide. And I had a reporter in the Las Vegas Review Journal write about it as well in 1995 and 1996 about the Lake Mead being contaminated with, car, with the red tide. And here they had to put ozone machines, drill up through caverns underneath Lake Mead, and shove in ozone into the water to purify the water out there at Lake Mead. So they've contaminated, wherever they've done this, they've contaminated waterways. It's just like what's happened in Japan and the radiation that's destroying the Pacific Ocean right now. Yeah. It's all the same people. Yeah. It's the Council of Twelve. It's these 12 crime family members that have taken over and hijacked the entire planet, basically. They control 92 uh, to 97% of the economies worldwide. In the General Accounting Office in 81, they, you know, the Bush family and, and Melman and these other council members we're only in control of 20% of the, the economy. Now they're, as of June of a year ago, in 2012, according to general accounting, they were in control of 95% of the U.S. economy. It's impossible for 12 men to do this without doing it through theft, fraud, deception, uh, cover-up, control the Justice Department, and judges, etc. It's impossible for 12 men to have that kind of, kind of money. It's just like the bank bailout. I just got through doing a piece because I met with William Black. He's the professor at the University of, of Missouri, a former regulator. He was investigating Silverado. I've known him for years, and uh, he was an attorney. He's the professor there at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And uh, he just I met with him last week and had lunch with him, and we were talking about old stuff of the past and how it all got covered up and what the current situation is. And he's, you know, here's a former regulator, worked for all of them, FDIC, FSLIC, uh, a professor. Uh, he writes about this cover-up. And like you said, this, this, uh, this settlement with J.P. Morgan's nothing. There's, you know, there's these other crimes. Who created the mortgages? And that was Larry Mizell, $100 trillion worth, that they derivatized to $5,000 trillion, according to what what uh, what uh different ones are saying now and sold them worldwide uh and Stu the third third crime that they're not even being prosecuted on is where they're coming back in and using the mortgages that they peddled themselves that they're running around stealing people's houses they've stolen 12.5 million houses from people over the past since bank bailout so you know these are crimes that they have not even been uh subject to uh they're just continually covering it up and people are screaming inside the Justice Department, inside the FBI and other agencies. They're saying, when's somebody going to prosecute the people at the very top? Go ahead, Kurt. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Stu, you mentioned about the uh, collateralization of the derivatives. Are you aware that Kentor Fitzgerald was the originator of $600 trillion? Now, folks, when we're talking about the theft of trillions of dollars, you got to understand that in in the world's economy, an average daily volume of transactions is four and a half trillion dollars. So it's not very hard to conceive of the theft of literally tens of trillions, maybe even hundreds of trillions of dollars, which was. I know that I know the Cantor Fitzgerald that the, they had headquarters there in the World Trade Center, and I know that that was, uh, you know, a destruction of a lot of evidence. Right. Uh, that they had they had some bonds or something. It may have been derivatives. I believe it was bonds that were due at the time, and they were coming to maturity date. Right. And nobody ever got paid on them. But you know, you uh, you get into where all this money went. They've got enough money to buy the economies up of the entire world three times over. And I've asked repeatedly people in U.S. intelligence, where is the money? Everybody says they've been using it off-planet. 
that they, they're using it to build these big bases in Mars and the moon. And I believe it with what I know about and having the, you know, the former scientists that worked uh, at the alien base, Ed Slade that's now dead, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, Rodney's friend and my friend, John Lear, that he's an uh, Area 51 pilot, test pilot, rated as the highest pilot in the world. Uh, you know, he's quite aware of things that went on out there. Well, when some of these in, uh, foreign investors were aware of the criminalization of our justice system, they were very skittish of buying into it, our financial system, which caused a financial crisis, which uh, the Queen of uh, England uh, looked to, uh, was trying to stimulate the economy again. But the, anyway, that's... Uh, all revealed by Christopher Story, my hero, who's in Christopher now. Story is an MI6 agent. He's a stooge. And, uh, you know, he might be your hero, but you don't know who he is. And his real name is Edward Har 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 Harlan. Ed Har Harlan. Har and he's hiding out in Canada because there's people inside U.S. intelligence that want to put him in prison. Okay. Very interesting. By the way, we only have uh, two and a half minutes left. Matter of fact, the guy wrote about me and he put my Bush crime family flowchart in one of his economic review uh, books that I'm written about in. And I did not know I'd been stooged by an MI6 agent to directly answer to the Queen of England. Wow. Stu, we've got about two and a half minutes left. Uh, Kurt, thank you for that. And I think this is getting more incredible. It, it's like we had a few more hours. Uh, Rodney, we're greatly honored. This is Will Wilson. And I've got your information down here at the bottom of the screen, and that's WikiLeaks USA dot org right and then we got and then defrauding america how how can readers get a hold of you um well my email address is stitch at rodney stitch dot com okay that's, that's s t i c h dot com no, okay that's pretty easy to remember because that's like good that's real good Stu, I, you've opened up a door for about 100 more tv programs is that all right yeah, that's okay. And okay. next time we uh, put Leo Wanta on, ask him about Mr. Story, Christopher Story. He can tell you everything because he Thank dealt with the guy. Thank you, Leo, be because here. we've reached that nexus where we both, uh, Christopher Story uh, has extolled the virtues of Leo Wanta, but then, uh, anyway, that's another story we don't have time for. Well, it's always supposed to get more complex. He, uh, Christopher Story wrote some stories about Leo Wanta, and Christopher Story, Leo, knew what he was, that he was an agent. He didn't know his real name, but he was doing that for a reason. But he can tell you about Christopher's story. Thank okay? you. Thank and you, details bro. about him. Half of his information were put out as disinformation, just like alternative media propagandists that we have today, that you can turn on the TV or turn on the radio, and they're putting out the same stuff, propaganda. Thank you. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense, too. Rodney, any one last statement to the uh, people out there? Rodney? 